Okay, so we've made it through the reviewing of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We'll start to begin to actually look at actual pre-calc material from here on out. But what's nice is that with this first section, 1.1, graphs and graphing utilities, a lot of this is really just reiterating graphing, working in the coordinate system, graphing equations, where some of them might be a little bit more intense, as we see right here. We have an X cubed term, which is nothing that we can't handle because we've taken algebra two and we know how we're doing that. Uh, we'll also be working with a calculator, seeing different views, the rectangular and also the table, which is going to give us a bunch of X and Y coordinates. And we'll also be determining some X intercepts, Y intercepts, and pretty much interpreting a bunch of information just based off of the graphs alone. So if you had me previously as an Algebra 2 teacher, we talked about four ways to get a concept. We talked about how graphing was nice, it was visual, it was a good option, um, took some time to get the y-intercept and figure out slope and whatnot. That was one option we saw. We also looked at equations, which were a big part we would try to fill all of the information into a table when possible. And finally, just being able to talk about an equation, how it's moving, if it's going up, if it's going down uh, with a sentence. That's a real great way to kind of seal the deal saying that you know what you're doing. Uh, so if we kick into this first example, they have us graphing this equation with an x cubed and we're deducting two. Let's zoom in on that so we know what we're working with. Uh, they ask us to denote when x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Nothing we can't handle because we have our equation, we have our x terms, and we have our y output. Uh, so we just go right to it. So picking our poison, we'll start first with when x is negative 2. If x is negative 2, we're just taking this negative 2, plugging it in for x. Keeping in mind that we're cubing this term. I use parentheses because I know that I'm cubing a negative term. So if I evaluate this, negative 2 being cubed, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 gets me negative 8. Deducting 2 towards the end gets us negative 10. So we already have one of these values. And we'll soon see that this may come back again in a different format, but for now, we know that the outcome here is negative 10. Uh, using our algebra skills, we should know how to graph this. So when x is negative 2, the outcome is negative 10. It's going to be kind of way down here. If we're moving along to the, let's go, let's go when x is 0. So if x was 0, previously in algebra 2, you might have known this as the y-intercept, which is cool, because when we plug that in, 0 cubed, taking away 2, same kind of idea as 0 minus 2. So it's just negative 2 in reality because it's just that last term, which is a constant. So we now have two terms we can evaluate. When x was negative 2, the outcome was negative 10. When x was 0, the outcome was negative 2. I'll give you a moment to fill in when x is negative 1, 1, and positive 2. So you should have been able to come up with that if x is negative 1, the outcome is negative 3. If x was positive 1, you should have been saying that the outcome there was negative 1. And if we were concluding with where x is 2, if we have 2 and we're cubing it, but keeping in mind we're deducting 2 with this equation, so that's really important, we can say that this is going to be 8 minus 2. So this should be 6. And all of these we can graph out. So we have x-coordinates, we have y-coordinates. If we plot all of this out, we know that if x is negative 1, that outcome is negative 3. We know that if x is positive 1, that outcome is negative 1. And if x is 2, that outcome is 6. 
So there was a lot of arithmetic here. Please be careful when you're plugging in your coordinates. Although we chose these five, we could have picked any, really. We could have picked five, we could have picked six, seven, negative seven, negative five, but these numbers are nice and convenient and the arithmetic there isn't too challenging. Um, so if we graph this out, we'll soon see that the way these are graphed looks pretty wild. Just based off of this, this isn't the best showing in the world, but it's got some curves to it. The calculator is really great for this too. So if you have that on hand, we'll take a look. We have the opportunity to graph x cubed minus two. If we want to pick the table, we can hit this graph button here in the top right corner. If we hit that, that gets us everything that it looks like. We see that our y-intercept, if we trace this, is negative 2. And if we want to get the table, we see that all of our outputs are here and present. We have when x is negative 2, the outcome is negative 10, negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 2, 6. A lot of this problem is honestly an algebra review. This is just saying that if you have a calculator, you can graph it. But worst case scenario, you have the option to graph any of those points. Uh, so that's nothing too crazy. If we continue to take a look, this time instead of graphing, we're just evaluating. I think this is a good one because we're just looking at the visual interpretation. So we're looking for our x-intercepts and also our y-intercepts. So I know that if it's an x-intercept, this is where it's going to cross this line right here. So the x-axis is going from left to right. I'll mark this up using a highlighter. So if I follow this line, I see I have this one point of intersection, another point of intersection as I take this down, and a third point finally towards the right. If we take a look at these points, we have when x is negative 2, the outcome is zero, so that's one x-intercept because it hits the line. We have, I'll label these also, so we have one, two, also the origin, zero, zero. We also have two, zero. So we have two x, or sorry, three x-intercepts, one, two, three, seen there in blue. Continuing to find the x-intercepts, well, this one isn't too crazy because we already found the 1. 0, 0 was the origin, and we also know this is going to be the y-intercept because this is now hitting the y-axis. There's only one of them, so that's kind of nice. So we have 0, 0 for that. And this can totally happen. We can totally have an x-intercept and the y-intercept share the same coordinate. That's fair game. It's not rewriting anything crazy. Uh, this third one has us creating an equation. So the vocab here is a little tricky. If you're a fan of vocab, a fan of English, cool, just fine. Uh, but if we take a look at this, I'm going to highlight the words that I think are important. And it's usually the math ones. So um, reading through this, and it's saying that the y value is the difference between 6 and 3 times the x value. So I know that this is working with the y value difference is a term that you should have seen in Algebra 1, similar to sum and difference and quotient. We also see 6 and 3 times, so that's probably implying we're using multiplication. Put a little x there. We'll put a little subtraction sign for difference. And we also have an x value towards the end. And they want us to use the English sentence to describe what's going on. So we normally have equations set up as y equals. The key ingredient here is that the use is, so we're stating something is something, like Snapchat is outdated, you're saying that, well, Snap is outdated. I mean, when you talk to your friends, you don't really say that, but it's one way you could think of it. So anytime you see is, you can think of that as an equal sign. 
we then see that we're hitting the difference between these two ideas here. So we're seeing the difference, so subtracting, between 6 and 3 times the x value. So they have 6 first running this difference, and then following it up with 3 times x value. So 6 minus 3x. I think I'm pretty good with that. I don't think things are too crazy. If you really want to show that you know what's going on, you can draw arrows from each word or number to exactly what it is making sense of in the equation. And I think we did just that. Every key word that I've underlined has some portion of this equation seen here, getting us this final y equals 6 minus 3x. This takes us towards the end portion where we're still graphing and they tell us to run the rigorous routine of saying let x equal all of this lovely stuff. Luckily the numbers are nice, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, x and 3. So the main idea with this problem, if you've taken algebra 2 and you remember this, that's awesome is that we don't really have an x-coordinate at all. You can look at this all day and there's no x-coordinate in here. So if you had me previously for algebra two, you might have recalled when we looked at this and we said, well, there's no x term. So we could say that this is really zero x minus three. And you may want to pause for a second and really look at this. Think, what type of slope intercept form is this? I just gave it away. But if you think of it in that format, that may make your life a lot easier. So this is another way you can rewrite this equation where hopefully you can say that the y-intercept, it has to be negative 3. And the slope is 0. So if you recall from algebra 2, if the slope's zero, think of that as just walking on flat land. And it's just excruciating. It's zero fun to walk on flat land. So that's kind of what the zero slope here is representing. It's zero fun. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's really going from left to right. So if you want to try and plug in these numbers, go for it. But you're not going to get very far. Noticing little clues like this along the way are going to it's going to make your life 10 times easier. So uh, to run this one, we know that our y-intercepts negative 3. All the other points are also going to have to be negative 3 because this is a zero slope going from left to right. So it's everywhere that y is negative 3. And if you want to run the marathon and fill all of this in, Keep writing negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, bam, bam, bam. That's one way to approach it. 